This is the propeller for my zombie chopper, the current one. I mean, I've made several. Um, this one is really good, except I think it's a little bit too high pitch, as in the propeller blades are tilted too far this way. Now, just a quick little overview on pitch. If you're if your propeller blades were aimed directly this way and they were spinning around, all they would do is mix the water around, spin it around, right? But if they're turned this way, all they would do is like slicing through the water, not really doing much of anything, but they'd be really easy to turn, right? And now somewhere between this angle and that angle is like the optimum angle for your motor, your boat and everything. And I think this is a little bit too steep. And I want to go back a little bit. So, it's a rainy day today. Well, the sun's out now, but everything's soaking out. So, I think I'm going to make a new propeller, new total propeller. Start with the mold. This is the mold. It's just a bunch of blocks of wood glued together in a spiral shape. And so, this is the mold that I used to make these propeller blades. You can actually see the outline of of where I put the fiberglass on here. So it kind of came off there, right? So I want to make another one of these and have each piece of wood <laughs> each piece of wood thinner so that it ends up being a more shallow slope up. So back here I have a bunch of wood I cut on my lumber mill and yes well that's definitely thinner. Alright What? Why is Lego over here? Somebody's in trouble. Back on. It's a cone. This part is a piece of PVC pipe inside that is the same thickness as this, and that fits on the pipe on the boat. So it's the same size sort of thing. So I basically want these to be wrapped around so I could actually, you know, put these against this when I make the fiberglass piece so it'll be stuck right on. Alright, hopefully that's held steady enough. This is the closest I've got to the right size. Great. I like to go this way. Yeah, yeah. Turns this way. That looks pretty good. Definitely a more shallow angle than that one. Right, I guess we'll do some kind of measurement like from this corner to here and make sure they're. The same going all the way. Actually, I think I want it to be a little steeper at the bottom and shallower angle as it goes up because it'll be accelerating the water as it goes, you know. Supposedly. So I'll just change that a little bit. So I'll start with maybe, I don't know, three centimeters here. Add a millimeter on every one. That sounds great. Oh, maybe four centimeters. Let's make it four centimeters down here. And I'll add a uh, one millimeter to the angle of every one. Okay. Sounds good. Oh, wow. Time to get some more glue. Oh, I think I can get enough out of there. Okay, now that I'm about to start gluing things, 
Uh, I need to get real serious about these measurements. Okay, this one is only like 3.2 millimeters. And my new pieces of wood are much thinner, so I might be going too low pitch. So maybe I want to make this one like three and a half. Yeah, I think like three and a half millimeters would probably be better. I don't want to go too low pitch because then I'll defeat the point of doing this. Oh, I could do math to figure it out, but I think I have a pretty good idea of what. Hmm. Okay. I'm going to leave that for a few hours. Go do something else. Hopefully this won't move. Okay, someone's going to ask, why do you make this corkscrewy shape like this? you know, thing. Instead of just having a propeller blade that's like this, right? Just a flat thing. Okay, it can't just be a flat thing because the distance the propeller blade travels on the outside is much further than the distance it travels on the inside, right? So this is just only traveling this far and out here it's traveling that far. And when this travels this far and that travels that far, they have to travel the same distance through the water. Get it? So it's got to be the same thickness. Obviously this can't be all steps. So I'm going to use a, a, what's this called? An aluminium flap wheel, flap disc, whatever. Smooth it out. But you guys back up, this is going to be loud. I also don't want to get dusty. Oh wow, this is pretty hard wood. Good, take a bit of work. Found a piece of 60 grit sandpaper on the ground the other day. I was visiting somewhere. Oh, it's still got some some use in it. That's great. This is wax, so something will stick to this. Okay. This is a small can and a big can of wax. This is car wax. Mm -hmm. It's not as good as this stuff. This stuff is very good at not letting fiberglass stick. It also makes the wood look so nice, doesn't yes, it? it does. It's like polishing. I want to lay it on a little thick to fill in some of the little creases. But it doesn't have to be perfect. Okay, you want to know how this thing works? Yeah. Okay. This is the piece it's attaching to. And I have to make sure I don't get wax on it. This will go like this. And I'll put a piece of fiberglass in the shape of the propeller right there, attached to this. And then I'll rotate this. Uh, oh, 360 divided by 3. 120 degrees. <laughs> and then make another one. And then rotate it again. And then make another one. How many? Three, three propellers. I think I'll make it pretty much like this one. This is cool. 
Oh, yeah, and then this will stick out the back. That's cool. I don't have any scientific way that I'm making this propeller or mathematical measurements or anything. Just doing what looks about right. And with a water propeller, it's nice to have it go like, you know, kind of like sweep back. So that if grass or seaweed gets caught on it, it ends up falling off the end. Whereas if you have like more like an airplane propeller where it kind of goes straight out, grass and stuff can get stuck on it, you know. So this is kind of what they call a weedless propeller. Yeah, so like on here, any grass would just kind of come right off the, the end. But if the propeller was going this way forward, if it had like more of a flat front edge, grass could get, you know, just stuck on there. And I just want to make sure I get all three propeller blades pretty much in the same. Didn't you want to do that to it? Why are you doing it again? <laughs> I'm doing it again. Because I put this on, then I realized I want to draw the propeller thing on there first. So I sanded the most of the wax off so I could draw on it, and now I'm waxing it again. Um, okay. What I've got set up here is I've got a block of wood. This is screwed down to it that's all clamped in place. Make sure it doesn't move. And the block of the, the block of wood has a hole, so this goes in the right height. And then I've got a little notch filed out of here. So I can put this on top and line it up with a line right here and do the first blade. And then I can rotate it 120 degrees until, well, doing a 120 degree angle wasn't as easy doing a 60 degree angle. So I'm just gonna check the 60 degree angle on the back side, which should put the front side at 180 degree, or 120 degrees. Then I do that propeller blade, and then the same thing. Uh, I'm gonna have to get it over there. Okay, I have to put a, one more line over here that's 60 degrees from that one. Okay, last thing, I'll lean the crowbar against it just to make sure this is pressed up against there so it'll be the same every time. Alright, I'm gonna cut out some pieces of fiberglass that are this shape with enough to go up onto this. I think I'll do three this shape and then three a little bit smaller so I can do two layers on each propeller blade at the beginning. Once I have one of these good I can just trace it for the rest. Oh, that trace. Should keep the stinky fumes blowing out the window. Yeah, it's gonna mix up a bit of resin. Okay, no screw ups, no screw ups. Okay, so if you don't know what it is. Deal with that later. Alright, Jamie. Let's get the hardener right. That's definitely more than I need.
I just need to let that cure. After it cures, I should draw the line so I can trim it so they can be all exactly the same. Hey, do you smell any resin? Nope. Do you know what it smells like? No, I do not. It smells like nail polish. Uh, no. Do you I smell anything like that? I did smell it. Do you smell any right now? Good. So you don't smell any right now, do you? All right, you'd definitely be able to smell it if you could smell it. I kind of want to take this out into the sun because the sun cures this stuff faster. Uh, but if I do that, I'll have to disconnect it and screw up the alignment of everything. So, well, it feels like it's pretty, I don't think it's pretty solid. Fan stir a little bit. Oh, no, before I move it, I want to draw my line. Can't tell if this is showing up, but I hope it is. Good wax job, Jamie. Let's get rid of this off. Alright. Go this way. Until this lines up with that line over there. Stick my head in the sand. Okay, the previous one looks like it's not in the way of this one at all. The trick will be to see how much of this gets in the way of the mold on the next one. I might have to take some of that off. Whatever though. Let's do the current step. Ooh, my line did show up. Good. Alright. Take this. for two. Now this one is probably going to be trickier. I have to trim that. So it doesn't hit this. And I just took the angle grinder to it. I think that will fit. Okay, that's the third one. Looking mighty good so far. Come on, let go. Sure, it's not perfect, but that is pretty good looking. Yeah. Got it. Let's try the weaker one first. Yeah, it's doing all right. And then I need this. Well, 
Rotate this and a whole bunch of pieces cut to put on there. And I just need to mix up some garbage and let's do it. Got my fan going. Okay. Oh yeah. <laughs> yeah. A little sandpaper and that'll look great. Should be super strong now. Now I have the conceptually easiest part. Just to smooth it out, right? Oh, but it's the most work. Ah, oh, sanding. I can do some of it with an angle grinder, but there's going to be some sanding. All right. It's oh, not bad. All right, I think I want to put some paint on it. Yeah, definitely some sanding I could still do, but that's good enough. Give it a test. Make sure everything's good. And I just, I just want to test it. I don't feel like sanding anymore. God. Oh, okay, now that I'm clean and not feeling so disgusting, I do kind of want to sand out these divots or get resin on the end of a stick and just put little dots everywhere there's a little pit. Okay, it's tomorrow. I'm somehow not itchy, which is amazing. And I think I'm going to tackle these little dents. All right, I just decided to sand the whole the whole propeller blade. I'll do the other side after. And I'm going to mix a little bit of resin and find something flat. Not this, but something better than this. That I can use to just smear. And get the little divots and all the scratches, get everything out of there. You know what I've got? I've actually got the thing for this. Fingers crossed, that's pretty good. Let that fast cure in the sun for a I'll spray it. Oh, it looks pretty good. Of course, as soon as I spray paint it silver, any blemishes will really stick out. Whatever, let's go. Oh, that one looks great. Not bad. Yeah, good enough. Okay. Ah, no, I better just wait. All right, I gotta go eat some food or something. And come back to this in like 15 minutes when it's definitely dry. Otherwise, I'm going to get fingerprints on it.
All right, if I measured this hole right, I should be able to put this on the boat, get it lined up with the hole that's on the propeller shaft, then drill through the other side and it'll be all lined up and then put the screw in. I don't want to drill through the other side here because it won't be perfectly lined up. Well, that looks pretty good. Right down there. And here's the rest of the boat. Let's just take it out. Oh, I guess I better get this one out of the way. Yeah, this is the boat we're doing. All right, let's go test it out. 